build it and they will come. Well, not always. Welcome to Leader Airport, nine years old and built at a cost of 130 million euros. This brand new, fully functioning, fully staffed international airport only receives two flights every week. Lida is the new venue of Festa Al Cell, formerly held on the Barcelona waterfront, but air traffic control constraints have forced Festa Al Cell out of Barcelona to its new long-term home here at Lida. Festa Al Cell may not be the same international spectacle as it was in previous years, but it's still one of the best places to see the Spanish military in action. And among today's highlights, the A400M Hornet Chinook Patria Aspa and the Tiger. Eris Barks closed the show with a sunset display. And from our amazing vantage point at the top of the nine-story control tower, let's turn to the first of our flying display participants, the Airbus A400M. The A400M is assembled in Spain by Airbus Defence and Space, and it made its first flight from Seville in 2009. The A400M serves alongside the C-130H Hercules in Spanish Air Force service and indeed it was parked next to an American Hercules in the static display and it was very interesting to compare these two aircraft side by side. The A400M really is a much more substantial aeroplane, it can take 116 fully equipped troops as opposed to just 64 in the Hercules. Yet the two aircraft actually have very similar payloads of 37 tonnes and 35 tonnes respectively. The A400M is significantly faster, however, with a top speed of 422 knots at cruising altitude and a range of 3,300 kilometers. A demonstration now by a pair of Air Tractor AT802 Fireboss aircraft. This American-produced aeroplane is one of the most used aerial firefighting planes in the world at the moment. We saw it in Series 1, Episode 5, performing a solo display at the Portugal Air Summit, but here, a two-ship. And indeed, I've also seen Spanish AT-802s doing their job for real, battling a bushfire on a hillside near Alicante a few years ago. And uh, it was obvious watching that procedure how much more effective the air tractor is than the smaller helicopters with underslung baskets. Here comes an extremely rare classic jet, the Hispano HA-220 Super Sieta. The Super Sieta is the ground attack variant of the HA-200 Sieta, uh, which was a two-seat jet trainer based on a Second World War design by Willy Messerschmitt. The Sieta was only ever operated by Spain and Egypt, and the Super Sieta was flown exclusively by the Spanish Air Force with just 25 built. 
I believe this one is the only flying example in the world and it's operated by a wonderful organisation called the Fundacio Parque Aeronautic de Catalonia who fly a fleet of classic aircraft from Sabadell Airfield just outside Barcelona. The sole modern fast jet of the show was the EF-18A Hornet, one of 72 A-model Hornets operated by the Spanish Air Force. Most of them were delivered during the late 1980s with a further batch of ex-US Navy Hornets arriving in the late 1990s. And although this is the earliest model of Hornet, they've all been upgraded to EF-18A Plus standard, which gives the aircraft similar capabilities to the newer FA-18C operated by other European nations such as Switzerland and Finland. And this is one of the Hornet's greatest assets, its extraordinary high alpha performance. It's usually considered pretty remarkable when a Western fighter can reach around 20 degrees of alpha, but this looks to me to be about double that. using its two General Electric F404 GE-400 engines producing 16,000 pounds of thrust. Final pass, a wing rock, which concludes the only fast jet demonstration of the day after the unfortunate cancellation of the Eurofighter solo display shortly before the show. Having seen that excellent Hornet display, we move on to something quite different with our first contribution from the Spanish Army, the CH-47D Chinook. The Chinook is an extraordinarily manoeuvrable aircraft, but this display barely scratched the surface of that. Instead, it was more of a multifaceted role demonstration which showcased some of the Chinook's operational roles. First of all, as you can see now, a parachute drop and the Chinook can carry an impressive 55 troops in its cabin when at full capacity. The Spanish Army operates 17 CH-47Ds, which are currently being upgraded to CH-47F standard. It's the only non-European aircraft type operated by the Spanish Army, which is dominated by Eurocopter products, including the Tiger, which we'll see later. 
They also fly the NH-90 tactical transport helicopter, which was due to perform at Festeralsel, but sadly had to withdraw due to the bout of wet, stormy weather that hit Spain in the run-up to this year's show. The Chinook has three hooks on the underside of the fuselage which can be used to carry enormous underslung loads, uh, weights of up to 12 tonnes, and that is simply incredible given the aircraft's empty weight is just over 11 tonnes. So a Chinook could hypothetically carry an entire second Chinook underneath it. A rather lighter load today, but still another very interesting element to this varied display. Classic aircraft of Sabadell now return, this time for a delightful solo display of the Dornier Do 27A utility and training aircraft developed in the 1950s. This aircraft was built to meet a Spanish Air Force requirement with construction taking place in Germany and in Spain. Although the German Air Force and German Army later became much larger customers, there were also a further 19 military customers bringing the total number of aircraft produced to more than 600. The Do 27 lands at a speed of just 35 knots and it can take off in 170 metres and land in a mere 160 metres. No need for that today, of course, on leaders two and a half kilometre long runway. The stars of the show for many were Spain's secondary military aerobatic team, Patria Aspa, with their five EC-120s, who put on an extremely spirited display with what are very low-powered utility and training helicopters. The team were founded in 2003 and made their air show debut a year later, performing at their first international show in 2005. But still today, they only travel outside of Spain quite rarely, much less so than Patria Aguila, who were Spain's main aerobatic team. Four aircraft rotate round a central point before the solo pilot climbs up through the middle of the main formation. And this is one of those very unusual manoeuvres that you can only get from a large helicopter team. And there simply aren't many of those around. India have a four-ship team going by the name of Sarang. Russia has the Burkuts. And Indonesia has the little-known Pegasus Dynamic Show. They also fly the EC-120, but their display isn't nearly as advanced as Patria Aspas and they don't perform very often. But those are the only large helicopter teams I'm aware of that have been active on the circuit in the past few years, so this is still quite an unusual sight. It's all the more impressive when you consider that Spain has only 15 of these helicopters, and the display pilots are also full-time flight instructors who fly air shows in addition to their regular duties. running in now for the final break of their display. We've seen two fantastic helicopter displays already, but my word, what you're about to see is quite special. The Spanish Army Eurocopter Tiger from Attack Helicopter Battalion 1 
performing easily the most aggressive and exciting military helicopter demonstration I've yet seen. The development of this aircraft began way back in the Cold War. It first flew in 1991, but its entry into service has been much more recent. Uh, it entered Spanish Army service in 2007, and they currently operate 20 examples. It also flies for the German, French and Australian armies, with 180 aircraft built in total. Tiger is the first European all-composite helicopter ever made. It's extremely light, extremely manoeuvrable, and very powerful as well. You'll see over the course of this display that it has quite an astonishing roll rate and pitch rate, and it has an impressive top speed as well, some 315 kilometers per hour. What a spectacular backdrop we have to watch this against. An absolutely stunning sunset directly behind the display area. This particular footage comes from the Saturday when the flying display took place between 5 p.m. and 8.30. And as the sky darkened further, the evening's entertainment was topped off by the Aerosparks display team. We're still expecting a further two episodes of this series. So until next time, from me, Adam Landau, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>